Hey folks, this is Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got Fitbit's new daily readiness score. This is something I talked about a couple months ago when they released the Charge 5, but as of today, you can now activate it and start getting the daily readiness scores in a couple days. So I'm going to walk you through how it works and what my data looks like over the past week in using it, uh, and kind of explain some of the pros and cons to it, as well as explain how it compares to other score and kind of readiness tracker systems, uh, like the Aura Ring and the Whoop Band. So the very first thing to be aware of is that this requires Fitbit Premium, so the paid subscription thingamajig. Uh, and then two, it also requires one of the more recent Fitbit devices. Uh, in particular, the Fitbit Sense, the Versa 3, the Versa 2, the Charge 5, the Lux, or the Inspire 2. But as long as you got one of those devices, you're pretty much good to go once you get it activated. So what you'll do is you crack open that Fitbit app and make sure it's updated, and then you're going to go down it to Daily Readiness. And then within that, you need to ensure that you click I Agree. And so I've got a couple screenshots from a week ago when I did this, uh, but you click the I Agree option, it'll then give you a very quick overview of how daily readiness works. We'll talk about it in just a second. Uh, and then once you're done, it'll basically say no score there, uh, no score yet. And at that point, you need to wait. You need to wait four days, four sleeps to be precise. Uh, and then within that four days, ideally, you'll have done uh, three workouts of about 30 minutes or so. It's not 100% required, but uh, the more data you give it during the learning phase, the better the data will be later on. Uh, now, I point out it's a little bit odd that you can't like retroactively get your data, given your Fitbit has all this exact same data for months. It's, as you'll see in a second, the score is data that's already been collecting forever. Uh, and so it's all, they just can't like toggle the consent and then boom, you get your daily readiness score based on your historical data. Now, after that four days, Fitbit says there's another 10 days, so two weeks in total of learning time frame there where it's still kind of figuring things out, uh, but that the basics of it are there at the four day marker. So with that, we will fast forward four days to right now, cracking up my app live uh, to show you what my score looks like from last night and kind of also talk about what it looked like the last couple of days as well. Now to see your score, you'll swipe down in the app until you see readiness about halfway down there, uh, 39 in my case. I'll tap that and then it shows the daily readiness score page. Uh, now this score will not show up on your wearable, which is sort of weird because it shows like sleep score and other things, but no daily readiness at all on the device. It's only app based. Um, but now you see my score of 39 and you see it's got three little progress chunks. Uh, Fitbit says that the low score setting is from zero to 30, though that's actually not true because I got a 32 days ago and it showed it as good. So there's some like discrepancy on what happens when you're on 30 precisely, but whatever, I guess I'll sort that out. Um, and then from 30 to some unknown number, Fitbit also doesn't declare what that is, uh, you'll get a score of good. Uh, and then from unknown number, probably 70 or so, up to 100, you get a score of excellent. Uh, now, as you can see there, it's a little quirky because I've got 39, which is like at the bottom end of that range, yet it shows the entire bar filled up. Uh, it just shows the whole bar if you've got any portion of the bar. So even my score of 30, showing right there, fills up the entire bar despite being one digit from the bottom. Oh, hey, and just a quick note, if you are finding this video interesting and useful, simply whack that like button at the bottom right now. It really does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. Now, your score is comprised of three things. If you scroll down, you can see those three things, activity, recent sleep, and heart rate variability. Uh, so the activity is looking at basically your active zone minutes in particular. So it doesn't really care too much about steps per se, uh, and it's more about active zone minutes. Uh, now, if you're walking fast, then that raises your heart rate because active zone minutes are all about heart rate. Uh, and so this is why, for example, yesterday, you see I got 96 active zone minutes uh, with my workout, even though my workout was only like 40 or 45 minutes, but it was a really high intensity workout. And thus I got more active zone minutes based on that. Uh, and so from here, you can see more information on that over the course of this time period, uh, and kind of the recommendations at the top there, uh, saying that I earned more active zone minutes than my average, and therefore, uh, it's giving me a moderate activity score. Uh, so if we swipe on back here, uh, you can see the recent sleep. Uh, this says high. In this case, it's looking at not just last night's sleep, but the last three days of sleep relative to your baseline. This is something I think is actually good because many sleep trackers only look at last night's sleep, which yes, is a driving factor, but you can still have one like so-so to bad night of sleep and then have great nights before that, and you'll still feel pretty decent for the most part. And so it's nice that it counts for all of those things uh, in a weighted way. And again, you can see my sleep there. Uh, and it's also interesting to note, if it gets the sleep time wrong, like this morning it was wrong by about a half an hour or so, I adjusted that sleep time and it correctly adjusted my scores as well. So that's nice to see because not all units do that. Uh, and then the last piece is heart rate variability. 
This is looking at your HRV values uh, over again this time period and how they compare to your baseline. Uh, and so as you change your baseline over time, uh, that'll change these values. In this case, last week, uh, I came back from jet lag across the ocean. So my sleep has not been great and thus everything's been kind of uh, depressed a little bit from a HRV standpoint. Uh, thus my kind of baselines are a bit off my norm. Also a good reason why it would have been useful to have like all my historical data there as opposed to just these last you know, days during this particular onboarding process. So if I then tap back again, uh, I've got those three components there, and you'll see those three then give me my total score at the top of 39. Now I thought it's a little bit strange that like the activity looks at roughly this 60% score range, and recent sleep looks like it's in the 90s, uh, and the heart rate variability like in the 30s or 40s. Um, I would have thought that if you averaged all those, you would have got your score, which, you know, just using like simple mental math there, would have been like in the 50s or 60s, not necessarily at 39. Uh, and so I don't have a problem with that 39 score per se, that might be fairly accurate in how I feel today, but I think that the like visual display of that, it just seems a little bit odd to me. Now from there, you will slide on down and you can see it's still tuning my score. I've got eight days left of this tuning process. Uh, and then the recommendation is what it's telling me to do today based on my score. And so if you score a good or excellent, then it'll give you some sort of active zone target. Uh, and again, active zone minutes aren't directly straight up minutes. So the more active zone minutes, that means usually a higher intensity workout. Uh, and then it shows you actual workouts from the Fitbit Premium Catalog. Uh, and now this is my last like kind of quirk or question here is that it shows me a score of again 39, which I would say, uh, despite it labeling as good, if you've got like 30s out of 100, I personally wouldn't say that's good, but okay. And then if I go down, it gives me a active zone recommendation of 78 to 110 minutes. Uh, so my workout idea last night was pretty beastly hard. It was like a crit race uh, and it hurt a lot. Uh, and that was roughly 40 minutes of extreme pain. My heart rate 170 beats per minute and I scored the 96 or whatever it was there. Uh, so now it's telling me to do even more than that today despite giving me a score that's relatively low actually. Uh, but then if you step forward beyond that, the challenge is that all these workouts it gives me are short. They're all like 10, 20, maybe a couple of 30 minutes and none of them are terribly hard. Like some of them are walking workouts. Uh, some of them are just, you know, ab standing workouts. And it's not to say that you can't make these workouts really hard, but you're not going to be able to get those intensity minutes with these sort of workouts. And so I would have thought if I looked in uh, this whole list of moderate workouts, uh, there's almost nothing here that's going to drive that kind of stuff. I mean, like five minute workouts, I have to do like 15 of these to get these anywhere near my active zone minute goals. And if I look, of course, in Fitbit's uh, workout catalog, you can see that some of these here, this is the wider catalog, do have things that would do this. I could do these other workouts there that are 30, 40 minutes of high intensity stuff, and that would definitely drive my heart rate up, uh, and then in turn, get my active zone minutes to that higher end goal. Uh, so I like the structure. I think in general, like what Fitbit is going for here is pretty cool. So if you go back to the readiness score, I like the fact that, for example, I can tap on activity uh, and it shows me what's making up this in terms of what the recommendation is and why it is. Or if I look at recent sleep, uh, why these things all contribute to that score. But I think like the nuance and the detail of that doesn't pass some of like the but why test. Like I just look at this and go, okay, but why does that do that? Why doesn't it contribute the right way? Why is it that, for example, these three pillars don't add up properly to an average score that puts me in the 50 to 70 or so range as opposed to this 39 range. In terms of my actual scores and how to compare to other devices, uh, I'm just gonna throw that on the screen right now and you can kind of read through this with me. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind is that the Fitbit gives you both a sleep score and a daily readiness score each day. They are actually different. Uh, and that's the same as Aura as well and the V3 model I have right here. Uh, it gives me both a readiness score and a sleep score uh, versus Whoop just gives you a recovery score. And Whoop's recovery score is purely based on on your sleep, what you did that night from the moment you fell asleep until when you woke up, and it has no bearing or influence from your workouts. Uh, that's a, that comes into your strain score, which is a whole different ball game, uh, and that's purely based on workouts. So those are like two pillars that never meet. Uh, so keep that in mind from the chart standpoint here. Uh, but in the case of Fitbit, if I look at last night, for example, uh, Fitbit gave me a readiness score of 38, Aura gave me 67, and Whoop gave me 28%. Uh, and in my case, I feel like I'm probably in the 50s overall, like I give myself a sleep score in the 50s. It wasn't like a bad night of sleep, but it wasn't a great night of sleep. And I probably give myself a readiness score in the 50s as well. Uh, so 
I don't know if I agree with, with any of those, but um, that's that. The day before, Fitme gave me a score of 69, uh, or gave me a readiness score of 77, and whoop down at 43%. I would agree that was actually a pretty good night of sleep and overall pretty good readiness, and therefore I would have said those scores of 69 to 70s or so uh, were spot on. And then prior to that, uh, I had a readiness score of 30, which it placed as good, as I mentioned before, um, whereas Ura had 57 and Whoop had 35. Uh, and I thought, again, that night I felt uh, a little bit tired, but still pretty good overall. And I would have put myself in the 60s or 70s, uh, you know, more akin to what uh, Aura put me there on that night. So that's just kind of like three random days worth of stuff. Uh, again, it says it has to take longer to kind of fine tune stuff, but um, having tracked these different readiness scores across a lot of different devices over the last two weeks, especially every single day, sleep and readiness scores, they're kind of all over the map uh, between I've been tracking the Whoop, the Aura, the Garmin, the Apple Watch um, scores, and now Fitbit. Sometimes they agree, but most times they're just like throwing jelly beans at the table and kind of all over the place. So with that, I'm certainly interested to hear what you think in terms of your readiness score and how it looks after that onboarding process of four or so days. And then again, after that, uh, you know, 10 to 14 more additional days uh, and whether or not those scores match how you feel uh, and then whether or not the recommended workouts it gives you uh, match what you feel like you should be doing that day. Uh, so definitely comment below once you get to that point. And then as always, if you found this video interesting or useful, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.